has spoken his name. The Lord Jehovah El Olam. Jehovah Elohim. Jehovah Rohi. Jehovah Sabaoth. Jehovah Sabaoth, the Lord of hosts. Jehovah Hoseinu. Jehovah El Shaddai. Jehovah Elohim. Jehovah Yahweh. Uh, beloved people, the Lord has spoken with me today at about 12 o'clock, coming to 1 o'clock, probably around 12.40, 12.42, is when the conversation came to an end. And uh, because the Bible says nobody knows the day or the hour, then I thought it very wise that I should relay this information to you globally, those that are tuned in, those that care about their eternity. The Bible says no one knows the day or the hour when the Messiah comes for the church, and yet the signs of the coming of the Messiah have become very prominent. The signs of the coming of the Messiah are now very clear and obvious. And well, beloved people, in this conversation, this is what the Lord said today, Friday, May 11th, the year 2018. And deep in the night here is African time. The Lord showed me from a little distance he lifted me up so I could see from a distance, see with the eyes of the Lord. Then I could see a sharp distinction, a sharp demarcation, a sharp difference between light and darkness on the earth. I could see the dispensations, two dispensations. One dispensation was in light. And then there was a sharp, like a wall, a wall, a sharp distinction and demarcation. And the other side was darkness and absolute darkness, pitch darkness that I have never seen before. And then after that, the sharp darkness that I saw, as I've said, was very, very thick darkness, pitchest darkness ever historic darkness never seen before and there was light on this side but it was a sharp wall 90 degree cut sharp vertical wall of darkness and on this side the wall of light then all of a sudden the Lord plunged me into the darkness the pitch darkness the historic darkness the light disappeared all of a sudden the light was out. The light disappeared and I found myself plunged into the pitch darkness. Then the Lord, the voice of the Lord, the Godhead, the Lord Jehovah Yahweh spoke in a loud voice and he said, a witness of the light. Again, the Lord had plunged me into pitch darkness when I was now into pitch darkness, thick historic darkness, and then the voice of the Godhead, the Lord Jehovah Yahweh, spoke and said, a witness of the light. Then I saw the two dreadful witnesses of God, the powerful, the most anointed witnesses of Revelation 11, I saw them moving in the darkness in a very amazing way. We were moving in the darkness in a very powerful way and very amazing because the darkness was so great that we were literally searching for where people live. It was not easy to see where people were. The darkness was so great as we moved in the voice after the voice of the Godhead had said a witness of the light we began to move in a very powerful way and the Lord had empowered us uh, we, we had so much power the two that you have now seen 
revealed had so much power as they moved in the darkness, with so much power, with some detail I cannot share. The power was so massive that we moved literally pursuing and looking for where people lived. And I saw that as the two dreadful witnesses of the Lord, the most revered witnesses of Revelation 11, as they came to cities and settlements, there was a massive demolition. The voice of the Lord, the Godhead, spoke saying, they are demolishing and destroying the earth. And there was a huge demolition, massive demolition, unbelievable. As we moved in, the Lord brought us with tremendous force and power that buildings were tumbling and demolishing and going down. It was a shocking moment to behold. There was tumbling and shaking and demolishing and the buildings going down in the places where people were living when we found where they stayed. And the voice of the Godhead spoke saying, they are demolishing and destroying the earth. Then I realized also in this tremendous conversation that the light, the only light that was emitted at that time in the darkness was the fire that came from us. The fire that came from the two dreadful witnesses, the, the red fire, the reddish fire that was huge flame and fire that, that we were moving with. That was the only source of light within the pitch darkness. The only source of light within the pitch darkness was the tremendous fire that the two dreadful witnesses were calling from heaven and it, they were moving with fire, big flames, tongues of fire, the reddish fire. And it was a tremendous moment. But what was most shocking and amazing about this all is that the two dreadful witnesses were very, very ferocious, very viciously ferocious. They were very ferocious and pursuing the enemy with massive force and power and moving into places and buildings, tumbling, and with massive fire. So it was a moment like never, ever seen before on the earth. It was not an easy moment on the earth. And then, after that, as we moved, we moved to the, to the tremendous witnesses of God. You could now see the two of them. They were moving together, but you could see them moving now as separate entities. Because right now the Lord has only revealed them. And once in a while they appear and people capture them. But they are moving now with different fires, the same as they are. And they are moving with the same amount of force and fire. And two flames is what I mean by different fires. Two big flames were moving across the earth. And so the shocking moment to behold on the earth. And then all of a sudden we saw now when we had moved, very deep into the darkness, then now we saw light in the horizon. Light began to show in the horizon as we were moving and doing the work of the Lord on the earth, the duty of the Lord on the earth. And then, beloved people, then at that time, when I saw the light and we saw the light in the horizon coming now, then I woke up from this conversation. And this is the reason I have come to you, beloved people, because the Bible says nobody knows the day or the hour when the Messiah comes for the church, when the church is snatched. What, however, stands out very prominently now is that I gave a prophecy about a year and three months ago before it was the first part was revealed. That is January 15, the year 2017. And come March 11, this year, the year 2018, the stairs, I saw the church walking on as they entered the massive cloud. They entered heaven after they were raptured. Those stairs have now been revealed They're in the sky above the earth. And people have recorded them 
It is a shocking bewilderment. It is the blockbuster that has shaken the whole earth. The Christian fraternity, everybody has gotten to wake up and understand that, look, the Messiah for sure is coming. If somebody can prophesy on January 15th, the year 2017, that he has seen the church enter raptured, and then when they reach up there near the cloud, they walk on glorious stairs with their glorious feet, and the cloud opens and they enter heaven without looking back. And then, come March 11, 2018, the Lord lowers the stairs. At a mere mention within the conference, when I merely mention that, remember, I have seen the entry of the church as they walk on the glorious stairs. Then the Lord lowers the stairs in the cloud, and people, mortal men, are able to capture the pictures of the stairs of heaven. Now, that is very clear that the Messiah is coming and coming soon. That means time has passed. Time is over. This is the time to prepare for the coming of the Messiah. However, in this conversation, beloved people, and you know, the big things, the big visitations, The big revelation the Lord has now made available to this generation, to all the nations of the earth, about this servant, about he that speaks with you. It's now a big, 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 wild, it has gone wild global. It's a big shake-up of the earth. Everybody has gotten to understand that the Lord has now lowered his principles on the earth in readiness for the next dispensation. Those points are very clear in the hearts and minds of those that care about eternity and has the need for righteousness, the need for holiness, the need for repentance and the turning away from this rampant sin that you see in the church today and globally in the world. However, when I woke up from this conversation, from where I am standing right now, where the Lord has just spoken with me, the Lord God, the Godhead, Jehovah Yahweh. When I woke up, there's one thing that came to mind immediately. Because the voice said, a witness of the light. So as we moved out, we were witnessing the light of the Lord. The light that is coming beyond the great tribulation. And that quickly reminded me, beloved people, of the book of John, chapter 1, verses 6 to 9 where he says, There was a man sent from God whose name was John. The same came for a witness to bear witness of the light that all men through him might believe. And it's amazing that in this conversation when the voice of the Lord tonight a few hours ago, said, a witness of the light, I could also see the way he typed, the way his hand typed. His hand typed within the darkness, but I could see the letters that were shining and glowing. A light of the darkness. A light of the darkness. I could see him type it, but I saw him type it. And yet here, it reminded me so much about this scripture. Now, verse 7, he says, John chapter 1, The same came for a witness to bear witness of the light that all men through him might believe. He was not the light, but was sent to bear witness of the light. Verse 9, he says, That was the true light which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. So it's very powerful in... uh, Amplified, he says, uh, There came a man sent from God, whose name was John, and he quotes Malachi chapter 3 verse 1. This man came to witness that he might testify of the light, that all men might believe in it, adhere to it, trust and rely upon it through him. Verse 8. He was not the light himself, but came that he might bear witness regarding the light. Verse 9 he says, There 
it was, the true light was then coming into the world, the genuine, perfect, steadfast light that illuminates every person. Then he quotes Isaiah 49, verse 6. And here he talks about Malachi, chapter 3, verse 1, beloved people. What a tremendous time the church finds herself in at this hour. And reading that Malachi chapter 3 verse 1, he says, See, I send my messenger who will prepare the way before me. Then suddenly the Lord you are seeking will come to the temple. The messenger of the covenant whom you desire will come, says the Lord of hosts. Say the Lord Almighty. So this is very powerful because the Lord in this conversation tonight has actually revealed something very big. Number one, he has revealed that the dispensation of darkness is coming. I have seen it. And it's pitch darkness, terrible darkness. Number two, he has revealed that this dispensation of light we have is soon coming to an end. Meaning the church which is the light of the world, is about to be taken away from the earth. And that sudden plunging into darkness was actually the rapture of the church. That sudden plunging, when the Lord all of a sudden ushered his two great witnesses of Revelation 11 into the pitch darkness to begin to do the duty, to begin to do the job, that was the rapture, that sudden disappearance of light. Because you know that the church is the light of the world, and the church is the vessel, the holy habitation of the Holy Spirit. As you see in the book of Second Thessalonians chapter 2, you read verse 4 down, up to 7. You see that truly he that holds back the person of the Antichrist from being revealed, the dominion of darkness, the dispensation of wickedness, is the Holy Spirit. And we know that the Holy Spirit was only sent to the church. Was strictly and only sent to the church. Was promised to the church and was sent to the church. And then he says the church is the holy habitation, the holy vessel, the holy temple of the Holy Spirit. And I mean the holy church. I mean the Christians, not the Christians walking in mini skirts, tight trousers, tight skirts. All these ones you see around on global Christian TV that are nude with short dresses and what immorality, false prophets, false apostles. I am talking about the holy remnant of the Lord. I'm talking about the people that choose righteousness and absolute holiness and are enabled by the Holy Spirit to sustain that righteousness within the milieu and the cascade and the harassment and the assaults of the wicked world of this day. Those remnant Christians that pursue righteousness and holiness and choose it as a lifestyle, a form of living. Their lives revolve around eternity, the glory of salvation, the glory of righteousness and holiness. Those are the holy tabernacle, the holy temple of the Holy Spirit, who will be taken. Because the Bible says, for without holiness, nobody will see the Lord. Hebrews 12, 14 finishes that way. And so you must understand, beloved people, that the Lord has revealed a very big thing. And that's why I come to you deep into the night, because I do not know. I wanted to let it go until morning. Then I said, no, I do not know the day or the hour. So I need to come to them now, that if it happens five minutes from when I announce it, so be it and well and good. They are well informed and well warned. And there is a saying that a just warning, a fair warning, is one that comes with counsel. And you can see that this warning of the Lord has come with counsel. And the counsel of the Lord is that holiness and righteousness should now be the instruments of your Christian work. They should be the facilitators of your lifestyle. They should be the centerpiece of your Christianity and lives today. Receiving Jesus, no matter the religion, you must now receive, be, repent and receive Jesus and be born again and prepare for eternity in heaven. Otherwise, you'll miss entry. So the Lord has revealed the imminent 
the, the suddenness of the coming of the Messiah, of the rapturing of the church, of the gathering of the saints caught up in the sky, in the clouds, in the heavens with the Lord. And the next thing the Lord has revealed is that it will be totally unbearable in the great tribulation. It will not be bearable. That's another thing the Lord has revealed in this conversation tonight. That whosoever has wisdom to understand, may they hearken unto the counsel of the Lord. And the counsel of he that has seen that day, he that the Lord speaks with, is that please repent and reject sin and pursue righteousness and walk in absolute holiness and the Holy Spirit will enable you to be able to sustain that holy walk that when the day comes, you may meet the benchmark of heaven and be taken up into the safety of heaven. Why? Because the teach darkness, the dispensation of darkness and wickedness that is coming is totally unbearable. Because he that speaks with this, one of the main principles, is the main principles that are involved in that dispensation. And it will be horrendous and unbelievable and unbearable, unthinkable. It is virtually unthinkable to imagine that one would want to live through it. So don't take chances, beloved people. Ensure that you prepare. Again, there is a saying that a fair warning comes with counsel. And this warning has come with counsel. A just warning comes with counsel. The other thing the Lord has revealed very mightily here is the link between the book of John chapter 1, verse 6 as you read on up to 9, and Malachi chapter 3, verse 1. And Malachi chapter 4, verses 4 to 5. That is what the Lord has linked here. Because we know that John came and he spoke with me before the throne of God. And then he came and dissolved in me. And then from that point on, this, after delivering the message, I began to go into the world, to the corners of the earth, to the ends of the earth, to the four winds of the earth, warning and calling, repent. Repent and turn away from sin. Repent and prepare the way for the coming of the Messiah. Be holy. Make your way straight now. For I have seen the coming of the Messiah. The King is coming. So the Lord has established that in a very amazing way. Because the voice spoke tonight and said, A witness of the light. A witness of the light. And sure enough, as we moved through the great darkness, and I don't, I'm not giving details, this is a veiled conversation. There's so much I've hidden back. It is tremendous. With so much, with so much force and authority and power and demolishing cities one after the other. And pursuing the enemy, it was literally pursuing. Pursuing, looking in hot pursuit for the enemy. It was a tremendous time. Now I know, now I have greater knowledge that there will be greater power of the two witnesses than the enemy. So there will be serious pursuit and a serious fight because it was literally pursuing and searching, searching for the enemy, to clash with the enemy. And so you see very clearly that at the end of it, then I saw, we saw light in the horizon. That is the Messiah coming back with the rapture saints, and that is the book of Revelation, chapter 19. That's what you see in the book of Revelation, chapter 19, verses 14 on. Revelation 19, 14 on, and I read it here, beloved people. This is what he says from verse 14 on Revelation 19. And he says, you could read from verse 11. Verse 11, he says, I saw heaven standing open, and there before me was a white horse whose rider is called Faithful and True. With justice he judges and makes war. His eyes are like blazing fire. And on his head are many crowns. He has a name written on him that no one knows but he himself. He is dressed in a robe dipped in blood, and his name is the Word of God. 
We know all that that is the Messiah. The armies of heaven were following him, riding, that is verse 14. Those are the rapture saints. The armies of heaven were following him, riding on white horses and dressed in fine linen, white and clean. That is the same fine linen, bright and clean you see in verse 8 of the same chapter, the same Revelation 19. So when you prepare it now, it has eternal value, eternal consequence in your life. Out of his mouth comes a sharp sword with which he strikes down the nations. He will rule them with an iron scepter. He treats the wine first of the fury of the wrath of God Almighty. On his robe and on his thigh he has this name written, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And I saw an angel sending. So this is a tremendous moment, beloved people, because this is the light I saw. This is the light that the two witnesses saw within the dispensation of the great tribulation. Then in the horizon, the light was coming. This light, this is the light. This light is the Messiah coming back with the raptured saints, and it will be an amazing time because he will strike down the enemies of God. And he will now rule. He will bind the enemy and rule for 1,000 years of peace. The millennium of Christ's reign. The reign of the Messiah. And during that time you will have two types of people on the earth. You will have Christians that were holy. Who chose holiness regardless of the dirty world. And went to heaven. And came back with him in verse 14. And they will have immortal bodies. And then you will have those that will be on the earth that they will rule. They will have mortal bodies. You will have two types of people on the earth. And the Messiah himself will be on the earth, ruling and reigning here. So, beloved people, the Lord has spoken in big terms. He has spoken big. The Lord has spoken profoundly in greater depth about the coming of the Messiah. And the message to this dispensation, to this generation is clear. Prepare the way for the coming of the Messiah. Stay out of the way. Don't be involved in the great tribulation. It will be totally unfathomable, unthinkable to remain, unbearable to sustain. And the Lord has revealed very, very seriously that he that speaks with you is the voice of one calling out in the wilderness. Because he said, a witness unto the light. The, the voice of one calling the wilderness that you see in Isaiah chapter 40, verse 3. Prepare ye the way of the Lord. Turn away from sin. Mow down the mountains of idolatry in your hearts. Bring them down. Plow them down. And raise the depression, the valleys of immorality, such your sin, that litter your heart. And prepare a plain ground, a level ground for the Lord, a wonderful road for the king to come and pass through your heart that you may be taken into the safety of heaven. And he has made it very clear now in this tremendous understanding. And this time now he has literally connected the events that took place at the Jordan River, at the baptism of the Messiah, to the events that took place in Buhungu Stadium on January 1, the year 2009. Now he has connected that, that now people may understand, because he says, a witness unto the light, as they plowed through the darkness, tumbling down the city, doing the duty of God, running errands for the Lord, fighting evil, and testifying against sin, and telling the nation that only the Messiah is worthy of worship, that the Antichrist is a fraud, he is a liar. Telling the nations that the false prophet is false. Telling the nations that only the Messiah that is coming is king. Only the Messiah has authority. He alone is Lord. He is the king of kings and lord of lords. Saying so during the great tribulation and clashing and crushing with the enemy. The Messiah is coming, beloved people. And when you read the Bible, this is a very amazing time. When the day opens up today, I'll bring up a greater opening on this. Because you see very clearly that when the Egyptian king, when the pharaoh saw the two dreams, 
the fat cows and the thin cows, the bony cows, the lean cows. And he saw the fat corn and the thin corn. When he saw the two dreams, it was amazing that the Egyptian magicians could not interpret the dream except now for Joseph that had the spirit of the Lord. And when Joseph, who had the spirit of the Lord, was unveiled to the king, he found out that what made the magicians fail to interpret the dream was the fact that at one point there were 14 cows, seven lean and seven bony, very wicked and thin. And in the second dream, at one point, they were both the fat corn and the thin corn, the scorched corn. That was what defeated, that was the trick that defeated the rest from understanding. And then, the interpretation of the dream from the Lord was that the seven years of famine coexist. They exist together with the seven years. The seven years of good crop, good produce, pampa harvest, super abundance exist together with the seven years of famine. Which means those 14 years, like the, those, those years are mixed. The 14 years are mixed. The seven fat cattle and the seven thin ones, they exist together. So you have a double of doubles, beloved people. And then the Bible says very clearly, the interpretation that came from the Lord is that when the seven good years of superabundance began, the famine was already felt. The famine began to bite. So people began to store one-fifth of their produce. They began to behave as though the famine is on them, and they, were, they began to make reserves. Reserves, reserves in preparation for the bad time that was coming. In preparation for Vicky, for the difficult time ahead, for the tribulation ahead. And the Lord used that to prepare Egypt, and that is what saved Egypt. And the Lord is saying the same thing here today. He's saying, number one, that you must understand that he upon whom the Spirit of God was, was the one that was chosen and honored by Egypt to be able to steer the nation that they may not suffer the tribulation that was ahead. And this generation too had to honor he that has the Spirit of the Lord that sees the tribulation that is coming. Number two, you see very clearly, beloved people, that the two, the, the, the first set of seven superabundance and the second set of drought and famine existed together, and they began to make reserves. Mean preparation began right away when the grace was still there. That when the tribulation appeared, those that prepared well did not suffer the tribulation. That is the message today. The Lord has shown me the two dispensations. He has shown me the light and shown me also the darkness. So the Lord has actually shown me a very big revelation, a very big revelation and dream for this generation, a very big message for this generation, for this hour. He has shown me both when the grace is available and during the dispensation of tremendous wickedness and darkness, when anybody that tries to worship Christ will be literally beheaded and now you can imagine why there will be a tremendous battle between me and the other forces during that time, between the two witnesses and the other principles on the other side. A tremendous, ferocious battle because they will also be out slaughtering Christians. And the Lord will send his two witnesses to fight bitterly, fight very bitterly. But the Bible says the Christians will not be defendable. They will not be slaughtered. So this is a tremendous conversation. The Lord is saying that the seven years of bumper harvest, of superabundance, existed together. They exist together with the years of famine. The Lord is essentially saying that the hour has come. Prepare like the dispensation of grace is over. Those that prepared well did not suffer the tribulation. That is the message today. Because the actors, the two principles that will be involved who have come specifically to do duty in the Great Tribulation are also in the dispensation of the grace before it ends, right at the end, preparing the church. So you can see, they are now
announcing two messages. They are announcing the coming of the Messiah and the entry of the church, and they are also announcing the other dispensation, the great battle there, plowing through tumbling cities and crashing with the devil. So the wise Christians are those that will prepare as though the rapture, as though the tribulation is happening the next minute, the next second. Those who will feel it, who will feel like, look, any moment now the church is going. Prepare like the dispensation of grace is over. I have seen the two dispensations this night. He has spoken big, and by voice he said, a witness unto the light. And the voice spoke again when there were tumbling cities. When God, the Godhead spoke, he said, they are demolishing and destroying the earth in the process of clashing with the devil and fighting sin and fighting wickedness and fighting evil and fighting darkness and fighting anything anti-Christ. They come to defend Christ until Christ appeared in the horizon. So they are in both dispensations, beloved people. God has spoken today in a very shocking manner. May those who have ears listen, I will have time. I will have a little time tomorrow, I mean this day as it opens up, to open up greater on this conversation. This is a historic conversation of this generation. The Messiah is coming. I have seen the church climb the glorious stairs and the door to the glory, the cloud opened, and they entered heaven, beloved people. To that, to that, to that, have a rim. Shalom. Shalom to Boker Tov.